In the second part of this series of Revelation, we saw the Apostle John taken up in the spirit to heaven and shown things that must take place. We saw the heavenly throne that Elohim sat on. We saw the 24 elders and the four living creatures. We then saw in the hand of Yahweh a scroll that no one was worthy to open and loose its seals. But then we see the Lamb, who was Yahshua, come and take the scroll and open its seals. We went through each of the first six seals, and as each seal was opened, horrible things happened on earth. After the fourth seal was opened, we saw a fourth of the world population was killed. In today's numbers, we see that that number will be a little less than 2 billion people, leaving the world population around 5.7 billion, down from 7.7 .7 billion. The fifth seal is then opened, and we see the martyrs who died for the testimony of Elohim are impatient for Yahweh to avenge their blood and judge all those who are not among his redeemed. They were asked to wait a little while longer until it was completed that the rest of their fellow servants and brethren would be killed as they were. Then the sixth seal opened, and we saw a great earthquake and stars falling from heaven, and the mighty men of the earth running into their bunkers. The wrath of Elohim is then upon the earth, and the wicked will be coming upon great perils. This is not like what people experienced during the days of Noah. The flood came quickly and took the wicked out. It is not like what was experienced in Sodom and Gomorrah. They were taken out all at once in one night. This is like nothing the earth has ever experienced. And as we continue into the next chapters, things will get worse. We still have one more seal to open. Much more follows from here. So let's dig into it again and gain more understanding. Let's begin. Revelation chapter 7 After these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living Elohim, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our Elohim on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Of the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Gad, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Asher, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Levi, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Zebulon, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 were sealed. After these things, I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, people, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our Elohim, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and the elders and the four living creatures, and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped Elohim, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might, be to our Elohim forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes, and where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of Elohim and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger any more nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of water. And Elohim will wipe away every tear from their eyes. 
So let's just stop right there. I don't know if there's another subject in the Bible that has so many different interpretations than the 144,000. Depending on what sect you are from, there always seems to be some different interpretation. There is little more detail we find in Revelation chapter 14, which we will get into in another video. But there's different beliefs in reference to the 144,000. For instance, Jehovah Witnesses believe that only 144,000 people will go to heaven. They refer to them as the heavenly class. And apparently, these people have already been chosen since the 1930s or so. The rest of the believers will be a part of what they refer to as the great crowd. They will not go to heaven, but they will reign on earth forever with Messiah. This, of course, leaving out many important things Yahshua has said and the 1000 year reign before eternal judgment. Now, I do not try speculating on things and I do not encourage others to do so either. This chapter of Revelation says that 144,000 people of the tribes of Israel will be sealed. So this is what I take it to mean. 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. You must understand that the children of Israel are scattered all over the world. They are still under the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. One of the things he said is found in verse 64 of chapter 28. It says, Then Yahweh will scatter you among all peoples, from one end of the earth to the other. And there you shall serve other gods, which neither you nor your fathers have known, wood and stone. There are many other verses that show this as well. But the point is that Israel is scattered amongst the world currently. But a certain number, 144,000 to be precise, will be sealed, which will keep them from the next events about to occur. He was specific in his number and who was sealed. It specifically said 144,000 and from the children of Israel. If you note directly after this, those who were at the throne worshiping Yahweh were a great number, not able to be counted, and they were from many nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues. So I do not speculate more about the 144,000, more than they are from the children of Israel and only 12,000 from each tribe will be sealed. It doesn't say how he chose these 144,000 except that they were servants of Elohim. But there are some other things to take notice of. It's important to note the difference in the tribes mentioned. Here are the tribes as in Genesis, then in Numbers, and last in Revelation chapter 7 we see that the tribe of Dan is removed from the list of the 12 tribes that will be sealed. And the tribe of Manasseh is said to take its place. We are not told exactly why this happened, so I'll not go into much detail. But we do know that the tribe of Dan participated in much wickedness and idolatry during the times of Israel, and perhaps this is why they're not even considered to be sealed. What we know is that 144,000, 12,000 from each of the tribes of Israel are sealed before any more destruction happens. There are many that focus on this number, but I honestly myself do not focus on it. Don't get me wrong, it's a great honor to be one of the 144,000 sealed, but those are too big of odds for me to focus on. My recommendation will be to not focus on the 144,000 and focus on being Yahshua's bride, his church. Focus on being redeemed by his blood. There's not enough information on the 144,000 to place an emphasis of focus around. Yahshua told us to be his bride. He is our bridegroom. He did not tell us to focus on being of the 144,000. So whoever Elohim chooses to be sealed, they are truly blessed. But if you are counted amongst this church, you are also truly blessed as well. So please make that your purpose. Be his church. Okay, let's continue. Revelation chapter 8. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before Elohim, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, with the prayers of the saints, ascended before Elohim from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. So the seven angels, who had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and hail and fire followed, 
mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood, and a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the water, because it was made bitter. Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. And I looked, and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Wow. What more can you say about these events? You just don't want to be here for them. Again, according to Revelation chapter 3 verse 10, this is the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. But let's go over some details. The seventh and final seal of the scroll is opened, which finally allows for the scroll to be unrolled. Now that the scroll is unrolled, there was silence in heaven, and then we see the seven angels who were given seven trumpets. Just like we saw in the sequence of the opening of the first four seals in part two, the first four trumpets sounded rapid succession one after another. The trumpet judgments are worse than the opening of the seals. A third of all trees and grass were burnt. A third of the sea became blood. A great mountain burning sounds an awful lot like a volcano erupting. A third of the living creatures in the sea die, and a third of the ships were destroyed. It's horrible. Basically, food is destroyed, the water supply is severely limited, and distribution of goods is crippled. The world is barely able to run smooth in our current way today. What's being described seems unimaginable. In the third trumpet, the name of the plague is called Wormwood. And because of it, many men will die. And then a third of the sun, moon, and stars wouldn't shine. I don't even know what that would be like, except it sounds like darkness on a third of the earth. And it doesn't ease up after this. After these first four trumpets, an angel then says, Whoa, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. So there's even more about to happen. Let's review it. Revelation chapter 9. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of Yahweh on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair. And their teeth were like lion's teeth, and they had breastplates like breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months, and they had as a king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name of Apollyon. One woe was passed. Behold, still two more rules are coming after these things. Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before Elohim, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, 
release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them. And thus, I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions. And out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed. By the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails are like serpents, having heads. And with them they do harm. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or the sorceries or the sexual immorality or their thefts. So yeah, it got worse. The fifth trumpet was blown, and from the bottomless pit, locusts came upon the earth. Now this is why the 144,000 are blessed, because they were the only ones who the locusts were not allowed to attack. This is another reason why it is believed that the church will not go through the great tribulation, because Yahweh will not torment his own people. The torment is for those who are not his people. So it is believed that the church is not around for these trumpets. Yes, I believe this, but obviously I do not know for sure, so I won't state it as a fact. If you are a believer in Yahshua, please do not fear any of this. Those that reject him or are too stubborn to reject the ways of the world for him should definitely fear. But the locusts were given authority to torment men for five months. Men would want to kill themselves, but would not be able to. Literally, the whole world will be tormented for almost half the year. That was the first woe that was spoken of by the angel. There are two remaining woes, which are the sixth and seventh trumpet. The sixth angel sounded the sixth trumpet, and that released the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. This is the second woe. These angels were held to be released at the exact hour, day, month, and year, which tells us again that Elohim is in control of all of this. This is all his schedule and his timing. Every day we have to get our lives right is an absolute gift. These four angels had an army of 200 million and they went to kill a third of mankind. Again, if we were still at the 5.7 billion from the first four seals opened, a third of mankind would be another 1.8 billion, which would bring the world population down to less than 4 billion. In a short period of time, the world would have lost almost half of its population. We are just talking about massive death and destruction. So many horrible things occurring, but the worst part is that those who are tormented did not repent. Again, this is how we know that either the church is not here for this or they are among the ones who are sealed because his people will be repenting and crying out to the Father after all this happened. These people that go through this will be under strong delusion. Though this is all in control by Elohim, Satan has his spin for the world as well. This is why he controls the media, to control the narrative of events in the world that we understand. To a dire warning about climate change, according to a new report, experts say that we have until 2030 to avoid catastrophe. It also says if unprecedented changes are not made and made soon, there will be irreversible damage to the planet. What I'm trying to say is that the devil is preparing for this too, and is mass conditioning the majority for it as well. We still have one more trumpet judgment left. I mean, this is absolutely a horrible time period. I struggled with making this episode because this portion of the scriptures can be very scary and hard to take. For me, my faith gives me great comfort because I know that this wrath is not directed at me, but directed at the wicked who still to this day continue to deny him. Maybe it was harder in the past to believe this, but today I wish that it was hard to believe that after all these judgments, these bad things that happen, that people still wouldn't recognize the error in their ways and begin to repent. But that just seems to be the state of man today. And it seems that all these events have already been placed in the minds of us all so that no one looks at this being the wrath of Elohim, but just bad, uncontrollable circumstances. Judgment is upon us. And the only thing we can do is have faith in Yahshua, the Messiah. We must follow his ways and commands. We must be led by the Holy Spirit. We must love one another as he has loved us. 
We must make Yahweh the priority and eliminate idols that seek to separate us from him. It is time now that we sincerely repent from our wickedness and wake up from the strong delusion that keeps many people blinded. If you're watching this video, it was made for you. It was made for you to have an understanding of what Elohim has communicated about the days before his judgment. Nothing the world today has to offer is worth going through any of this. Make the right decision today, before tomorrow comes and it's too late for you. It's not too late for you today. So if the devil whispers that in your ear, rebuke it. It's not true. If you're watching this, it's because the Father wants you to. So please listen to whatever he is saying to you. Repent and believe in Yahshua HaMashiach, the Messiah who was sent to take the punishment of our sins. He is awesome and wonderful and worthy of our praise. So give it all to him, along with every other part of you. The time is now. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please do not forget to like it and share it with others. If you have not already done so, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram. As always, I'd like to thank all of you who support this ministry. Your contributions truly bless me. I'm truly thankful for your support. Thank you for listening to Yahweh's call on your heart. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.